All right, everyone, here's your chapter seven answer section. So remember, we need to be conducting a linear regression. We need to uh, use the iris data set from previous CLUT lectures. That should be easy enough. We're going to select sepal length and width. Uh, and then we're going to do some as an independent of head of variables. And then we have some model uh, evaluation that we want to do. Also, uh, once we plot, we want to have two style changes, some, some, some manipulation so you can see that you're, you know, able to uh, find a new feature and add it to your and add it into your plot. So the first thing we're going to do is initialize our packages. Uh, first things first, we have our NumPy here. Uh, we're going to use that for some analysis probably uh, using a, uh, the polyfit function I showed you in the slides. We have our plotting function. Uh, I'm loading this all up in a pandas data frame and uh, I'm also uh, you know, importing these two packages here. This one is for analysis later on, perhaps. There's another way to do this, so you can use this that's package if you wanted. Uh, I'm only using the uh, NumPy package for this solution. Oh no, I do have, the, for the linear regression, we do use the uh, stats package. And then lastly, uh, we have our um, iris data frame that we're gonna load into memory, okay? So first thing we do is we do our, uh, we load our data frame, uh, well, we load our data called iris into uh, into memory into an object, and then in this line, I convert uh, that object into a pandas data frame. So what we see here is you know pandas data frame. We say what the data is, and then I'm passing it this uh, this numpy dot c underscore command, which is going to take two uh, like sets of lists of data and uh, concatenate it into a NumPy array, which is basically a very special type of list that NumPy uses for mathematical operations, and it's called an array, okay? So uh, the data becomes an array, which is just a list of the, with this data. Uh, I'll show you what that data looks like. Uh, first off, let's uh, just show this stuff here and uh, see what I mean. So I run that. Give it a second. So there is our uh, data, which is also in an array right now. Um, and then what we have at the bottom. So each of these, each of these, uh, this is also a list of lists, okay? So it's like a two dimensional matrix, which is called an array. You can think of this basically like a CSV file in some ways, in that each each list in this list of lists is a row of data, and all of the values are position aligned with each other, so that if this is petal length, this next list, the first element, will also be petal length. So every list in this list of lists has four items, which is the petal length and widths, and sepal length and widths. And if we scroll down, we see a bunch of other information. Let's just go back up first. We have target, which is the category of iris, Let's see, category of flower. There are three types of flowers in here. Uh, and so they have each, each element, I think there are 150 piece uh, measurements in this uh, data set, uh, has a label for one of, the th one of the three flower types. And then this is the names of the flowers here, all in a NumPy array with some information about um, what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, data is in this array. Uh, so the three types are Satosa, Versicolor, and Virginica. Uh, that's all we really need to know here. The rest is kind of just like metadata information about the, uh, the data set itself. It has like, like it's, oh, it's for Creative Commons. Oh, oh it also contains a handful of uh, summary statistics. Uh, but otherwise it has just like, you know, descriptions of where this data comes from, okay? Um, so we have all of that information now. Uh, so in our data frame, I'm saying what the data is, is not only the four sepal lengths and widths uh, and petal lengths and widths, uh, I'm saying that the target, the 0, 1, 2, uh, is also a column in this data frame. Lastly, I take, I tell it what the column names are by adding two lists together, which is the list for feature names to uh, tar uh, with the target name. So I'm saying like, uh, you know, zero, one, and two are these feature names. Okay, so then what we do guys, let's just print this data frame and just see what it looks like. At the top, here you go, sepal length and width. You see in the left hand side here, these are our index numbers uh, and all of the, oh, and lastly, here's the fifth column. 
target uh, with you know zero, one, all the way to two. So all of the all of the categories there. Consequently, we could have also probably figured out a way to um, add the the labels as opposed to the numbers. But we want the numbers for the type of analysis that we're doing because usually most statistical packages, if you have them as categories, are going to convert them into numbers for this their calculation anyways. So as part of this uh, question here, we wanted to set the independent variable to simple length and the dependent variable to simple width. Uh, so remember how our normal nomenclature for lengths uh, for dependent and independent variables are guys. Uh, y is our dependent variable, so width is going to be y, and x is our independent variable, which is going to be, uh, you know, length. So next thing we need to do is conduct a linear regression. Uh, basically, we're, well, what we're really doing in this line is creating the regression line itself, the uh, slope uh, as well as the intercept, okay? So I'm gonna put um, create slope line for graph, okay? And you'll see how fit n goes in there in a second. So what this does, what these two lines do, guys, is first off, this polyfit line is trying is going to create the regression line of best fit. And how it does it is by saying, okay, you have to feed it your independent and dependent variable and tell it what kind of line you want it to make. That's why it's called polyfit, meaning, um, you know, you can use a straight line, which is called a linear regression. You can use a parabola, which is kind of like, um, like almost like a bell curve looking shape, which is um, a parabolic regression, you can do cubic regression, and that's all based on this number here. We want to make a straight line. We don't usually want to use those other types of fitting because um, they become confusing. Uh, they, and it's hard to interpret. So usually, if you're starting to get into those kind of shapes, it gets better to go into machine learning. But that's a, that's a side thought, guys. Uh, regardless, uh, this creates the regression line. And then this uh, fit function, uh, basically what we're doing here is we're, we're saying, okay, we have the parameters for our, um, for our line. Uh, now we want to create it as a function so we could pass an X into it and it'll give us a Y. I'll show you what both of, both of these things look like. Okay, guys, print fit. So this becomes, this is our slope and this is our line of best fit or our intercept. And the whole thing can be our line of best fit. If you remember MX plus B, for instance. Uh, so when we print function of F now, what do we get? Look at that. We get our MX plus B nomenclature for creating a line. All right. So now that we have this line, what we can do oops, is pass. Well, now we have this function created, we can pass in information like this and this would be our x, and it's going to produce what the y coordinate should be. So now we can create a line with this. See what I mean? See how this is, see how this will now, now we have the um, function we need in order to plot the line that we want. So now all we gotta do is plot our graph. So here it is all here. Remember how we plot a graph? We're just gonna do plot.subplots, and the default of that is just a single plot. We plot our x and y using x and y here and I give it some color parameters so we can, it's easier to look at. Uh, then we say um, we want to give it another piece of information, which is X and Y again. So here is our X, but this is gonna be our line uh, that we want, our line of best fit, our regression line that we're gonna add to this graph in terms of data. So we give it the X again, and our Y is gonna be the function of this X, whatever the return is from this fit function. And then uh, I tell it what kind of line we want it to be and what kind of color, black, okay? And these are red circles, okay? Uh, two changes uh, I've added to this, well, I've added a few more. I've created labels for the X and Y axis. I have uh, created a plot for title and then I use that grid lining uh, function, okay? So this is what the graph should now look like. Oops, here we go. My desktop is a mess, guys. Ignore it. <laughs> um, here's the here's the graph that's output from all of that. That should make sense now. We have the dotted lines. It looks like it's not dotted here, but it's just because it's really close to the red and it's hard to see. Maybe we change the opacity of our uh, dots and it'll make it easier to see. But regardless, it looks okay. Next, I wanted to show you wanted to we need to get the R value uh, for this linear regression. 
and I, you needed to define what an R value was. So I'm going to uh, show you the way to get the R value. This is a linear regression analysis in the SciPy uh, stats package. Uh, so what we do is we do linear regression of our X and Y. It gives us a slope and intercept like before. However, we wouldn't have, we, we wouldn't have been able to necessarily create a function out of this, uh, we could have probably just run this and then passed in slope and intercept into this here. But I wanted to show these two things to you one at a time anyways, uh, because this is a this is just a useful quick function as well. But this is a way to get your R value. Um, so you have R values, return, P value, and the variance standard error, basically. It's, it's not exactly variance, but you can think of it like a type of uh, variance calculation. So uh, that's the objects that are returned from doing this analysis and the R value, uh, let's just print this so you can see it. So it says the R value is negative 10.10 and the P value is 0.1827. So um, just to recap what P values are, this would not be a significant difference or they would not find a significant trend basically. We look for 0 0.05 for that. Um, so it's not significant anyways, but what the R value means and what this would say is um, given this data um, and the variance and all the information we have, um, our, our, dependent, our independent variable can influences our de uh, dependent variable uh, based uh, around 10%. Like 10% of the variance in this data can be accounted for by this independent variable. Um, and the negative means that it's in a, it's in a negative trend. So the, so the more you have of your independent variable, the less you should get of your dependent variable. And that 10% less basically is what you can say uh, very high level about this analysis if the p-value is less than 0.05. Okay, guys, that's the solution to this, to this thing. If you wrote something out like that, uh, about your R value that would have satisfied that. Uh, and I've included a couple of style changes. That covers everything, guys. So thank you very much and see you in the next chapter.